the brushless three-phase motor like for example i have this one over here and the esc together create something called the bldc the brushless direct current motors why this is important because this this thing is just a three-phase alternating current motors but because on our drones in general in the rc hobby we do not have a source of the three-phase alternating current power source then we make this thing the esc to pretend it's really generating an alternating uh, current with three phases just from the actually from the single phase of the constant current so that it's not really a phase but how this thing is working internally it's a let's say public knowledge that everybody knows that there are mosfets over here and they are switching something to something but how this thing is combined connected internally and how the esc knows uh, what should be happening so let me start drawing some lines on the on the whiteboard hoping that it will be enough for you for understand how the esc work to and how it allows the electric brushless motor to rotate with the speed and with the torque we desire so first of all i have a separate series of videos about the motors and how the motors are winded so today let's do only a really simplified version of how the motor is built internally and internally all, all basically all of our motors are built as three phases connected terminated into something called delta because the three phases together create the well the triangle and because delta is a triangle you know and we usually call the phases a b and c but this is important it's not really that much of an important information now we have three phases and for the motor to work the something has to change how the coils are energized if i would have to show this to you by example for example if this uh, this thing is a magnet on the rotor of the of the motor then if you want this to rotate clockwise that means that this coil has to energize and the magnetic field has to pull the magnet then the, this one then the, this one and so on and so on and so on uh, that means uh, that not only the each coil has to be energized in the precisely and by precisely i mean really precisely computed moment but also the power that's going to the coil depends on how much we open the throttle how much we want motor to accelerate the ramp up power and also a few other factors but this thing let's please do remember is connected to only single not really even a phase just a single direct current plus and a single direct current minus two lines it's plus it's minus and what we need really is the ability for the coils to energize to commutate in the correct order so here comes the electronics and uh, the mosfets uh, inside of the esc are connected into something called three h half h bridges um, if you do not know what the h bridge is then the wikipedia has a pretty good example and h bridge is the four switches that allows to reverse the polarity of anything for example the brushed uh, motor and the half of the h bridge is just uh, two switches we will not go into details of uh, how it's done internally today i will just show you where the mosfets are located and how they connect phases to plus and to the minus so we have the phase number one that is connected with a switch the switch is really a mosfet transistor we are not talking about a switch as a mechanical switch it's just a mosfet transistor i'm just uh, drawing switches because it's simpler and each phase by a mosfet transistor can be either connected to plus or either connected to the minus the same goes for the oh, here too much to the phase B and here we have to the phase the minus and exactly the same situation will happen over here the ESC internally can connect each of the phases each of the wires 
to either plus or the minus. So, and of course, keep the uh, phases not energized, not connected to either both of those. And also to, let's say, make something almost like a short circuit when it just connects one phase to both plus and the minus uh, to plus. No, not energized. Let's, let's, let's keep it that way. So, how is happening? When, for example, from the other example before, we have magnet more or less in this position and we want to pull the magnet to this position, uh, Keeping, remembering that the magnet has a an, an north and a south pole, uh, then either this switch and this switch will close and the current will flow through the hole, through the, uh, through the coil and generate magnetic field that will pull the magnet towards this coil or if the orientation of the magnet is opposite because every uh, every other magnet uh, they are north south north south north south orientated then this switch will close and this switch will close and esc will just keep opening and closing phases opening and closing switches that are made as the mosfet transistor to rotate the magnets plural magnets around the pivot point, the center, the, uh, the axis of the motor and we have it spinning. Now, there is a, another question, how the ESC knows when to energize the coil? This is a slightly, I don't want to say complicated, but this element has an element of magic. The process of detection of the position of the magnet relative to the coil of one of the phases of the motor is relatively simple. Uh, at least in theory, in practice, it's not really that simple because there are a lot of things that can affect uh, the whole process. But it relies on the basic electrical principle. Not only the electric field can generate magnetic field, but also magnetic field can generate the electric field, because to be honest, they are almost the same. That means when the current is flowing through a, through a coil that makes one of the phases of the, uh, of the, of the motor, uh, if we apply voltage over here and over here, then the coil will generate magnetic field and based on the polarity of the of the coil it will be either north south or south north but also when the magnetic field is traveling close to the conductor then the magnetic field induces the electric field inside of the conductor inside of the coil this means when the uh, magnet is traveling on the outside of the of the stator of the coil it generates the voltage and ESC not only can switch the phase to either uh, with polarity A or B and energize the coil but also the ESC can detect the voltage with the comparator and the ADC uh, analog digital digital converter it can detect the voltage and when we will one day I will, one day I'll do it and I will connect the motor to the oscilloscope and then on the oscilloscope we will notice that the voltage generated by the by the magnets and the coil looks like the alternating current this is why by checking the current voltage and the previous voltage the ESC knows what is the current position of the magnet relative to the phase. And thanks to this information, because we might think that um, motors accelerate very quickly, it can predict when uh, the next, zero, the, by, the mom, by the way, the, the moment of crossing of the coil uh, in the closest position of the, of the magnet, the magnet closest to the coil is called the zero crossing, it can detect when the next zero crossing will happen because yes there will be a small type difference between those events but it's not that big this is why the esc knows when the motor when the magnet crossed above one of the phases and more or less can predict when the next crossing will happen over here of course we have quite complicated electronic device with the comparator with the analog digital conversion and other things like that we are not going into this topic but only thanks to the observing of the voltage generated by 
phases, the ESC can predict where magnet and magnets are right now and when will be the next event of the zero crossing. Because when the magnet is traveling like that, right now the coil should be energized, there should be a commutation because the magnetic field of this coil has to pull on this magnet and when we have the zero crossing, the coil basically has to let go because if it would continue to keep itself energized with the same polarization, it will be pulling the magnet back and thus lowering the rotation speed, not increasing it. And this is, my friends, how the ESCs are working. Of course, this is extremely simplified explanation of the internals of the ESC. It might sound simple, but it's really not, especially on the electrical, about the accuracy and the noise that's coming from the measurement of the back EMF, the process of generating the voltage by the magnet is called the back EMF detection. How accurate this is, how precisely ESC can measure time, can measure voltages, can measure when the voltage generated by the magnet is the highest, is the lowest and so on. Amount of electricity that goes into the into the phases, into the battery bag and also the how fast the switches, the MOSFET transistor in the, uh, in the ESC itself can open and close. All of that makes the process of building a good ESC with good firmware not so trivial task because if you really look at this very carefully we have BL Heli and currently there is really not much besides BL Heli. Okay, it's the FETEC also has the, the KISS uh, Fly Duino, I think. I never remember the name of that. And some super generic ESC that are still based on the Simon K plus some proprietary uh, STM, for example, drivers. For some reasons we do not really use in our hobby. So, might simple, but when you go into the details it's getting kind of complicated. I hope that this video explained enough of the principles of the ESC so that when next time we'll tell you something about oh I don't know how the ESC works but it's like switching something you say yes it's switching something and it has three phases and the commutation and the back EMF detection and so on and so on and so on. By the way there will be slightly more about the ESCs and um, BL Heli, but not only in the next few months probably, because this is kind of interesting topic not covered by very many of the YouTubers. So, thank you very much for watching and until the next one. Bye bye.